Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and I'm back again with Radical Reggie. <laughs> and we're back with another pickups video. I know you guys are excited. Uh, we're honestly, we're probably at like, what number are we at? We're probably in the, in the 40 numbers, like, dude. Pickups videos, this right? is going to be the 51st pickups video that I've done for my channel, and oh, wow. you have been on like 40 of those. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully, I'll be on even more than that later in the future, but we got a lot of cool pickups for you guys, so let's already get started. So first thing I want to show you guys here is a uh, was actually gifted to me uh, my buddy John Houston for my birthday. Uh, he got me the Tales of Fantasia for Super Nintendo. I've seen this uh, logo. I don't know where. So you know the tell you're familiar with the Tales of series? Yes, yes. Uh, that is their first game that they made. Okay. And um, it was it actually only came out in Japan on Super Nintendo, but uh, it was fan translated. So I got the reproduction cart. And this box comes with a manual inside of it and everything, so it really feels authentic like if it came out yeah. in America. But uh, you guys know I'm a big fan of the Tales series, and um, it's really kept cool to have that box like that. It really feels good. Yeah. Um, so, John, if you're watching, man, thanks a lot. I appreciate you. And if you guys see John Houston on the street, he's looking for a Super Nintendo box. Let's give him a hand. Wow, this is, yeah, this is amazing. It looks great, actually. All right. Okay, next up for me is a game I've been obsessed with. That is... Luigi's Mansion 3 on the Switch. Have you played this yet? Uh, I have not, but I, I've been looking at it, so tell, give, tell me about it. Well, it's Luigi's Mansion, which is basically Nintendo's version of Ghostbusters. <laughs> okay, so is it like um, is it like a, has an arcadey feel to it in a way? Yeah, I mean, basically you, you you control Luigi going around this haunted mansion trying to free your friends who are, that are trapped in paintings, um, and you're you're controlling like this pack, very Ghostbusters like, where you, you kind of vacuum up mm -hmm. stuff within the, the environment, but also ghosts, and you do battles with them. The big mechanic with this game is it, you have this thing called Gooigi, which can come out of his backpack that's basically a duplicate of him right. but in goo in green goo and gooigi can slide through like small uh pipes or mm -hmm. into like uh slats you know like a uh, you know yeah you know, basically get into places that I, that he can't gooigi i think he's gonna make it into the next mario kart game possibly probably probably <laughs> gooigi. i mean it's really designed for co-op and so you don't have to play in co-op you can basically what you can do is you can switch between them while you're playing or you can do co-op and okay. uh it's such a well-made, fun game. It, I, I literally, when I first got it, I spent the first three or four hours, like I, I, I dreamt about it and I immediately got up and started playing it again in the morning. <laughs> nice, it, it's just one of those fun games where it seems like everything, every round, you know, around every corner is something for you to collect, something mm -hmm. for you to discover. Um, yeah, it's, I, I love it. So it's, it's pretty awesome. Okay, I, I might check it out. You know, maybe I wait for a price drop. Well, Nintendo don't really price They'll drop. never drop the price, but, so, but I- Offer up maybe. I mean, I like it because, you know, I, I definitely like the original. The one on the 3DS I thought was pretty good. This is definitely not as good as the original, but it's definitely good. Well, it, I, it's already nicer to play it on a bigger screen, I'm assuming. Yeah, you know? it really does. Yeah. And, and it looks fantastic. Like, it's just a little bit better in graphics. So, I, I like it. Okay. Uh, next game here is something probably nobody expected. But uh, if you're familiar with games like Super or Chase HQ or Super Chase HQ, oh, yeah. This is World Super Police, also known as Police Cops. Well, I, I call it Police Cops. But uh, this only came out in PAL Territories. And this is like, you remember that company called Jellico? Oh, dude, are you serious? This sounds yeah. awesome. This game, it, it's, it's awesome, dude. You play as, um, you have two uh, factions you play as. Like, there's a, the Japanese cops, and then I think there's the American cops you can play as. Huh. And uh, they all, like, have these cars that have guns on them, and you're chasing down these villains. It's just, it's just like Chase HQ, pretty much, but just a modern version of it. It's really good. Has cheesy Canadian voice acting, which I love. Yeah, uh, it's it's just uh, this. I'm not gonna say it's a hidden gem, but it's a lot of fun. So if you're like if you're fans of those games, you'll definitely get into this one. It's really deep on story too, which is great. Mm. The only thing is that you can't skip some story scenes while you're on the levels, which can be annoying. But other than uh, that, though, uh, it's a lot of fun. Actually, it looks like it's got decent graphics. Mm -hmm. Huh. Okay. Well, I want a copy of this. This looks cool. <laughs> you know me and my racing games. So it's it's a definitely like a mid uh, PS2 generation game. So, okay. Um, yeah. They they kind of got down the graphics how they wanted it and everything yeah. by that time. But huh. World Super Police. Uh, let me know what you guys think about it if you played it. Okay. Next up for me is a super rare release, and that is a game called The Dark Side Detective, which I think you originally told me about. Yes. Correct. Dark Side Detective. Yep. Yeah. Sure Dude, did. have you played this? 
Yeah, I got. I, I love. I didn't get very far, but I love the concept of the, how they're part, how they work together, yes. and everything. It's yeah. like kind of like a Batman and Robin thing in a way. Uh, the detective and the, and the cop says the funny like lines, and, oh, like, one liners, and everything. Oh, incredibly funny. Yeah, it's, yeah. So this is basically you guys have seen the footage here. It reminds me of you know those old school Lucas Arts games a little bit in that you know kind of a Maniac Mansion style, or like Indiana Jones, or yeah, like those. absolutely, yep. and. Uh, uh, you know, it, it has a very sort of like old school look to it, but it's it's so it's it, it's an adventure game, but mm -hmm. it has this horror element to it. And also, it has like three. I think at the, you, there's different stories you go to, so it's not just yes. one main story. They call them cases. Cases, yeah. pretty much. So you go through one case at a time, pretty much, and yeah. it, they're very different from each other. So you always feel like there's something new going yeah. on, which keeps you like like into the game, pretty much. You know, so yeah, no, it's it, and it's uh, there's a lot of really good puzzles in this. Mm -hmm. um, in the, I think it's the second case where you're in the library, and uh, there's all these different there's there's these different dead ghostly authors like Edgar Allan Poe mm. and uh, they're bickering back and forth between other authors about whose story is best. It's just, it's a really well made game. It's absolutely hilarious mm -hmm. and it's cool they got a physical release here. So. Yeah, Super Rare is knocking it out. They're getting yep. some good titles this, on the Switch. So. This really impressed me. I like that game a lot. Very cool, man. Alright, so next game here. Uh, this is uh, for the PS4. This is Ghost 1.0. Hmm. Uh, Ghost 1.0 uh, came out as a physical from Play Asia. And it's, it's basically a Metroidvania type game where you play as a, I want to say, well, she's pretty much a robot, but um, I, I don't know the full story of it, but I don't know if she's a real person or not, but hmm. your soul kind of goes into the robot and she takes over pretty much. Okay. And you're, you're kind of like in this, um, you're trying to discover what's going on in this factory. So if you're a fan of Metroidvania type games, this, this is something I think you could definitely get into. I love uh, how the, the story goes in the game because there's there's a lot of voice acting going on in the game, and it kind of, it's funny what's going on with the story and everything. How they talk back between each other, like her, she's like working with these uh, two. Um, I don't want to say they're scientists, but they're like these tech geeks or whatever, and uh, they're trying to like find out what's going on in this in this laboratory or whatnot. So very cool game for huh. what I played so far. As you guys know, it, it coming from Play Asia East Asia Soft, it comes with a soundtrack, yeah, manual game of course, and I just love the packaging on this type of stuff. So. Yeah. I also like how they're all their releases are all the same size, so they look yeah, really so good. Yeah, so you put them uniform, really easy, yeah. and everything. So it's very huh. nice. But like I said, East Asia Soft they always put out good stuff, and uh, you, if you even if the game is not good, you know at least you know you're getting a good package with, with yeah, the game. Yeah, they always do really. I good mean, job. a soundtrack goes a long way with me. You yeah, know, like if, seriously, soundtrack has <laughs> got good yeah. music. Okay, I can fit it. But Metro anyway, Metroidvania though, you got me sold on that. So yeah, and it's it's <laughs> it's, it's a little bit different because uh, you, it's kind of a. Like you use you use the, the the thumbstick both thumbsticks like the one to aim in in, in different directions. Pretty okay, much. so oh, I, I like it when games do that. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. that's it's pretty cool, but uh, definitely something that I think a lot of people will be interested in. I have not heard anybody talk about this game, but it's made by the same people who made Unepic. If you remember when I brought that game on yeah, the channel, so okay. same makers of that. So Ghost 1.0. Mm, okay. Next up for me is a game that I got fairly recently. I, it's been out for a little while, but it's a Spyro uh, Reignited Trilogy. Uh, this is for the Switch, and this is basically the remastered reimagining of the first three Spyro games, which mm -hmm. actually I had never played before. And, and what's the um, I really got addicted to this because these are basically collectathons. They're third-person platforming games, and it's all about collecting gems mm -hmm. and unlocking the next area. And sometimes I just want that. You know what I mean? I don't. Yeah, something simple. Something simple. And so you know, these were originally what PlayStation One games. They were. Yeah, and they were obviously very popular at the time, but uh, this looks fantastic on Switch. The creator of that series, I believe, is Insomniac, uh, creators of Ratchet and Clank, and they made that one game. You remember Destructor for PlayStation? Yeah, you're right. They I made those the same creators. Yeah. I, I think so. I could be wrong. I remember it's but... one of those developers that, that was, yeah, that went on to do some great things in here. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, these are, I mean, again, I can't really compare it to the original because I didn't play them, um, but you guys can tell me down you know, in the comments. The one thing I've heard people say that the the Switch version is obviously the least uh, performing version of it, and so version of it. and so people have kind of complained, and I can sort of I, I can sort of understand that the frame rate definitely dips occasionally. But honestly, I don't I never noticed it like it wasn't that bad. So I'm playing it in docked mode when I'm mm -hmm. capturing the footage and, and all that. So maybe in handheld it's a little bit uh, worse. Um, it does, I believe. Yeah, uh, you have to download. I think it only comes with one or two on it, and you have to download the other one. Okay. It is what it is. So just be aware that they're not all yeah. on the, the the cartridge, which is kind of a bummer. But from what I played, actually, I really enjoyed it. So it's okay. fun. I actually never got into the spiral games. I I 
for some reason, not that it's a bad looking game or anything like that, but I just never appealed to the the, the main character. But uh, maybe I'll, I'll give it a go. Maybe I'll try it out one of these days. Yeah, I would say you know if you if you get it on sale, it's three games. You know, mm-hmm. so that's there's a lot of content there. And again, if you like those old school collectathon platforming games, I think they're pretty fun. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm just kind of randomly grabbing stuff here, but um. Next game here, uh, if you we talked about uh, that, uh, that, I think it was our last video. We talked yeah. about my buddy Ryan got that shoot 'em up collection. Well, uh, this is what I got out of that shoot 'em up collection. Uh, game I needed. Uh, this is a 360 game. Uh, this is a Ginga Force or Ginga Force, whatever you want to call it. And um, this is a pretty good shoot 'em up game. Um, I didn't like this game at first because you know I wasn't good at it. As to, it just turned me <laughs> off. But <laughs> as I started playing it this time. I started to appreciate it more. You know, it's not a game that's going to hold your hand. You know, a lot of shoot-em-ups don't really hold your hand at all. Mm-hmm. But uh, there's just a lot going on in this game. You have to kind of pay attention to what can hurt you and what yeah, it could actually help you in this game. So it was a little bit fast-paced at first, but I've gotten used to it. I've gotten better at the game. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Hopefully this game, I mean, this game is a, it's become more expensive over, over how, the years. How, do you mind saying how much you paid for that? Because it, it can vary all over the place. I actually traded some stuff in to get okay, it. So he you? was originally charging... Ooh. Jeez. Do you think that's the price right there? I, he gives good deals, so um, okay. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's a fair price. Is this, you're charging $90 for this, so thank God. They can. The and so that, that's the reason why I was asking it. That, that the ex, you know, when I was in Japan, especially, even in Japan where it was local, you would it'd be anywhere from $30 to $200 mm-hmm. for these games. To, you know, so, and, and that's, that's crazy, but, but it, yes. it's just... That's kind of what they go for. So shoot 90 up. might actually be completely fair. I don't know. But. Yeah, shoot 'em ups have got, I mean, they're such a niche genre, and getting them physical these days are, are kind of like, you know, they just they just charge a lot for them, so there's yeah. not that many of them. I mean, And so many of them came out on the 360 in they Japan. Did. So they did, and then once they, once they sold out, they didn't really do reprints of them, so what's out there yeah. is what's out there. This became a Wonder Price game, so this is a Wonder Price version, which is their version of Greatest Hits. So Yeah, it looks a little see, different this, than the one I got. Actually. Yeah. Huh. The one you got might have like both game might have two games on it because there's another version that has two games on it like this we'll, game and another one. We'll, they're sitting over. We'll have to look after. Yeah, this we'll, video. we'll definitely look. Yeah. Right. Anyway, <laughs> Ginga Force, <laughs> give this game a go if you like shoot 'em ups. Huh. Okay. Cool. All right. Next up is a game I'm not going to talk too much about, but I just want to mention that it came out on Switch because a lot of people <laughs> were really impressed that it came out at all on Switch, right. which is uh, The Witcher Three, uh, The Wild Hunt. This is the collector's edition, so it also includes uh, all of the DLC, which is cool. So this is just one of the most epic, probably uh, best-selling, probably best-reviewed RPGs of all time, mm-hmm. and it's cool that it came out on Switch. Um, I bought this because my wife, frankly, just wanted to play it again, and so it's so <laughs> easy to play it on the Switch because you can just play it anywhere, you know? Speaking of your wife, did she like the series uh, on, t- on Netflix? Yes. Okay, she did yes. enjoy it? Okay. Yeah, although it's really interesting because the Netflix series actually is a mix of the books and the previous, I, I think it's just the books, and so even though she played and beat this, um, we were still a little bit lost as to some of the terminology that they mm-hmm. were using in the mo- or in the show, but we still loved it. It was like really right. interesting. So okay, I actually watched it. Uh, do you know what Looper is? That the YouTube channel Looper. It, they do a yes. bunch of I, yeah, I know about Looper. They're kind of like Watch Mojo in a way. Watch yeah, very similar to that. But anyways, they did a video about you know what you need to know before watching the The Witcher on Netflix. Okay, and that was really handy because we were like, oh, that's who that person is, or that's okay. who. Does you know it, it sort of tied it all together for us, but yeah, we loved it, and we're huge fans. Looking forward to Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. So. Dude, that's gonna be that's gonna be epic when that comes out. These up. guys do good games, man. This yeah. is a good port. They're serious business. Yeah. Okay. Um. Next game here. This one. This is gonna be kind of funny because I just actually got this, so I haven't actually played it. I got this right before it's, I came it's over. It's not even open yet. And what's Already, what's cool about this game that I saw is that it comes with a vinyl record. Yeah, I was so, gonna say it's perfectly the size for a 12 inch record. Yeah, so record soundtrack. Uh, from what I've seen of it briefly, it's kind of like like a game like a, a Journey, okay. Flower, like an ex- exploration game, pretty much. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I see. I haven't even broken the seal on it yet. But <laughs> by the time you, you see this video, this will be open. It's already mm-hmm. torn here, so it's semi open. But uh, yeah, man, now I gotta get a record player or something, man. Cause, uh, <laughs> dude, that's gonna be like crazy. Cause I seen like I went to Walmart uh-huh. and I saw that they have a vinyl selection there. So I was like, dude, they're serious business. Oh vinyl. yeah, vinyl. Vinyl's the only part of the music industry that's actually been growing year after year. Mm-hmm. So uh, vinyl's big business. A lot of people like me obviously love it. Right. And what's cool about it again, you you own it. They can't take the vinyl away from you. Right. Vinyl lasts for a hundred years if you take care of it. So it's a it's a it's a good format for that. 
Okay. Yeah. So, anyways, guys, another uh, game from Red Art Games. Interesting. Um, I'll be I'll be curious to see what this is like. I I've actually been thinking about doing a video. Someone recommended that I do a video kind of focusing on relaxation games. Yeah. Games that don't really raise your heartbeat too much. Okay, like you're saying, you know, you're talking about that. What do you think about that one game, the swimming game you talked to me about? Yeah, would I was that, that like be it. Yeah, it would be in there. Okay. I mean, I did, it's not that I didn't not, you know, I, how am I trying to say? Looking back mm -hmm. on it, I think it's better than I remember because I, I didn't realize it was going to be so mellow. Right. But now that I know what it is, it's like, oh, okay. I, I, like, I've been tempted to kind of go back and explore it because it was fun to explore. So that would obviously be one of them. Journey, Flower, stuff like that. Okay. You know. Cool stuff, man. Okay. Next up for me is a uh, another super rare game. This is a really interesting one. It's called Wolverblade. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. <laughs> it is a classic... Uh, hack and slash beat em up. So it takes place, I believe, in the Viking times. I'm trying to remember if it actually Dark did. Ages, huh? Ooh. Yeah. Oh, there's a, yeah. And it, it is exactly what it sounds. It's kind of like the 2D sort of, um, you know, just hacking and slashing. It's it, Castle Crashers like type. Yeah. Okay. Extremely violent. Lots of hacking off limbs and dismembering people and all sorts of good Ooh. stuff like that. Um, this game got extremely great reviews because I was looking, I was like, should I, you know, is this something that I should keep for my collection or whatever? But super, um, super rare. They're knocking it out, man. Look yeah, this. again, this is a okay. game that a lot of people were looking forward to because if you like those sort of beat em ups, there's a lot of depth to this, both in just the kind of, um, you know, different types of attacks you can do. And uh, yeah, I was having fun capturing the footage for this. So. Okay. This would be one that you. I assume it probably supports two players. Uh, uh yeah, two players. Okay, yeah. Good. You yeah. and I have to try this sometime. It'd be fun. Yeah, a lot of a lot of beat 'em up games that are coming out too now. They're doing four player, which is great. So yeah. We'll because well, you can do that on things like the Switch or mm -hmm. you know anything with like, grab a bunch of friends over, sit on the couch, and definitely man. hack and slash your way through it. So yeah. Okay. All right. Um, next game here. All right. So got this for. Ten dollars. It was on sale at GameStop, and I couldn't believe it. This is—I've been waiting for this game to drop in price for a while. This is the sink, the sinking city. Hmm. I think this is done by uh, the story of H.P. Lovecraft. Yup. Oh, and uh, basically, okay. um, you play as a detective. He arrives in this town. And this town is like, it's like nasty and cursed. I mean, there's something going on. You're finding like all these dead sea creatures on like on docks and everything, and on the beaches and everything. And Basically, everybody in the town is really weird. There's murders going on, and you're trying to investigate a lot of stuff that's going on. So it pretty much plays like a mystery game, I would say, and you kind of put the clues together to figure out what's going on, and you could kind of progress in the game. Hmm. Um, HP Lovecraft is always really weird, creepy. You know, that game is all kinds of creep, man. Really, like, seriously. Um, I was playing. I think it was it was going to play more like a survival horror game. Um, it doesn't really, but it really keeps you interested. It's like a mystery, of course, and it's like, mm. you know, it keeps you engaged pretty much. You're trying to, people are like going crazy, murdering people, and you're trying to figure out what's going on. People are going crazy. There's one guy who looks like, uh, he just looks jacked up, and like it's like, what the heck is going on here? But uh. it's a very interesting game that, you know, really kind of pulled me in. So, um, especially for $10, you know, you, that's yeah. already win, no matter what. Well, H.P. Lovecraft always deals with the, the idea of madness and how much the human brain can actually process. Right. So, you know, like in the Call of Cthulhu, you know, a lot of those games are just about kind of maintaining your sanity and not looking at something that your brain can't process. Right. Which is a really cool concept. So, huh, I'll have to check this out. I don't think I've heard of that before. Yeah, Singing City. They it, it's part of the Cthulhu series, I believe. They just don't want to add the name on there. Maybe, maybe they couldn't I mean, license it. Yeah, something. they might. That might be it. But um, I mean, look how creepy that is. You know, oh, I know. There's, there's something watching the city, and it's like, man, yeah. it's like, ugh. What's, what's going on? <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> All right. Next up for me is a game. Uh, this is Atari Age. I believe I got this actually back in Portland Retro Gaming Expo. Ah, okay. This is a, a t uh, Atari Twenty Six Hundred homebrew called. Uh, Aardvark, <laughs> which is one of, I love this game. So I'm not sure if Aardvark was an arcade game or what. I never played it in the arcades, but I always played it um, on my Commodore 64 um, as a game called Oil's Well. But basically what it Oil's is. Oil's Well, I remember that Yeah, so, so basically what it is is that in this game, you're an Aardvark at the very top and then you can stretch your tongue down through these tunnels. And you're, you're, the whole thing is, it's kind of like Pac-Man a little bit, mm -hmm. but in that you're trying to eat all these pellets. But the thing is that you, you there's these little critters that are in the tunnels and some of them can touch you and others can't. And mm -hmm. so you're constantly kind of retracting your tongue and it's, it's a, 
it's kind of like a, a risk versus reward game. Right. And as you get further down, you have more exposure to your tongue, and so you have to really kind of watch it. And so um, this is a really good version for the Atari 2600. Actually, it looks fantastic. Yeah. Plays really well. Um, I love that. I love that they like you know put these boxes together, make it yeah, like, this is, this is really high cool. quality cartridges, manuals. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. I actually actually got a, my first game from Atari Age, but I forgot to bring it. Um, oh really? I'll, I have to show it in our next pickups video, so be on the lookout for that too. Okay, <laughs> interesting. Huh. All right. Um, so I've been looking for this game for a while, and um, I know you guys are gonna laugh at me for this, but um, on the Switch, I wanted to get Ease Eight on the Switch. You know, because you played on the PS4. Played on the PS4 yes. and Vita and beat both of them. <laughs> Love this game. <laughs> so and I, and this I, is your third. This copy. Is my third go. This is my third copy of the game, and. Um, I just really, I just really enjoyed this game, yeah. and um, um, for as a portable game, like the Vita version is pretty much the vanilla version. It doesn't have a lot of extras and everything like that, so I probably won't be playing that version again. But as a portable, I, I like having it on the Switch pretty much because the Switch I play yeah. way more often than my Vita, and this is just one like probably one of my top favorite RPGs of all time. I won't tell you what number it is, but in that list, but it's definitely one of my top games. And it's just a really good time. I mean, you played this on the, you on the Switch pretty much, and um, yeah, I, I, it was fantastic. Actually, it, was. it really was. Mm -hmm. This is such a. It, it's really cool to explore the island. Mm -hmm. I love the combat system. The characters were really interesting, yep. and and also the plot and the way the the character, what you learn about the characters, was mm -hmm. really interesting. Uh, just a, such a well made RPG. It's Definitely. so good. Um, if you're uh, new to the series, this is a good one to start at. Yeah. Um, a lot of folks will tell you there's it's not their favorite because they want you to start in the, the first games. A lot of old school people like the, the original games on the turbo graphics and everything, but you could start this one. You could totally start at. I know the eight might turn some people off. Like, hey, what about seven? Am I missing this? No, you can straight go into this one because the games are not even told in chronicle order. So it would right. be great. So you can always start at any. It's the one same of them. main character, right? Same the, main character yeah. going on adventures, which is great. But this hmm. game will definitely is good for newcomers. So check this one out. Hmm. Cool. All right, next for me. Um, Another super rare game here. This is Rive Ultimate Edition, which I think is a game that you originally told me about. Yes. But this is the Switch version here. And I believe the reason why this is called the Ultimate Edition becomes it, it comes with this, like this little cheesy, it, I shouldn't say cheesy, but it comes with a bonus game mm -hmm. that is completely unrelated to this. But um, first off, Rive is a... It's it's mostly a twin stick shooter, but yeah. then it also becomes a platforming game when the gravity changes. It starts off as a as a shoot 'em up in the beginning, yeah, it was just hilarious. But yeah, yeah. It's, it, that game this game is awesome, and the main it character is. is hilarious. Yes, what do you what do you? He's talking? just got so much bad attitude. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but this is such a fun game. Like it is. It, the controls, the uh, the exploration, and the mm -hmm. the. It, it, it really keeps you engaged. Yes. Uh, how, how you're exploring the spaceship and turning stuff on. Um, very very puzzle like sometimes in just mm -hmm. surviving a level and understanding the sort of like what you need to do and where you need to be and what mm -hmm. you need to shoot at and stuff. Um, yeah, I was really digging this. I, this almost, awesome. I almost beat it on PS4, but I fell off from it. But I think when I go back into the game again, I'll probably just play the Switch version. Mm -hmm. This is the ultimate one. Okay. Um, yeah, I was. I I think this game's awesome. I was really impressed. <laughs> nice, fun. man. All right, so I don't know if you remember in arcades uh, back in the heyday of the arcades, but there was a game called Police 911. Do you remember that game? No. It's an arcade me. game. And hopefully, I rem I'm saying the name right. I remember the name of it. But it's an arcade game where you uh, move your body and the character moves his body as well. So you're like shooting at enemies. So hmm. it's like are a you really, standing on a board or something? You're standing on a board and okay. it's detecting your movements. Like you're dodging bullets and everything. You're shooting enemies. Okay. So it was actually ported to the PS2 as Police 24 7. Huh. And, uh, it, 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 it plays just like the arcade. It's, it's a little bit weird when you with playing with the controller because the game is actually uh, what's that the, the camera the eye camera for for the PS2 is yeah, actually yeah. compatible with that, so you can actually play it like it's an arcade and it could detect your movements and everything. I didn't have a camera, so basically I was using the analog to move uh, the character around, which was kind of weird and everything. But the game was pretty much arcade perfect. I, I'm pretty I'm, I'm assuming. Is it all uh, full motion video? Uh, just like that, yeah. Just it's not full motion video. It's more like um, just uh, the, no. It's just oh, it's not. Okay. I'm yeah. just looking at the small picture. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So um, you continue to find the weirdest games. <laughs> well, that's because you're looking. <laughs> I look outside the box. I mean, like uh, yeah. There's, there's so many games that come to America, and you just got to really look out there. Like the test system, PS2. Like I always say, yeah. opened me up to looking at all kind of games. Yeah. And uh, a region free uh, PS2 system is is pretty amazing to have because you could like find all kind of games that you never heard of. And uh, police twenty four seven. I mean, wow, that's a cool cover too. Actually. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's like I think it's some comic artist. I can't remember. Yeah, it, it looks, looks like, like it. Greg. Well, the guy used to draw Spawn back. I was going to say Spawns. Really, yeah. looks very Spawn like. 
<laughs> All right. Man, always, always with the surprises. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got a reason to grab the gun con. So, yeah. You know. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna show something a little bit different here. Uh, so this was uh, this was gifted to me over Christmas uh, by a good friend of the channel here. Um, this is. This is a total surprise. I didn't know this is coming, but he knows that I have a Vectrex. This is Vector Pilot. This is, I believe, a homebrew game for the Vectrex. Hmm. Really well made. Look at that clamshell in there. It's awesome. This is basically Time Pilot for the Vectrex, which Time Pilot is one of my arcade, my favorite arcade games. I love that game. Mm -hmm. Getting a Vectrex version, which actually looks pretty cool. Um, and it's got the overlay. Yeah, I was, I was just looking at that, dude. That's cool. Yeah, so the Vectrex by default is just black and white, mm -hmm. but a lot of, I think almost every Vectrex game would come with like a colored the overlay. Old, old overlay, yeah. Yeah, which actually in, it enhances the game quite a bit, especially for like a modern gamer. Yep. Um, and then also too, it'll, it'll have instructions down here for the controller. But this is amazing. It looks like a, a physical, you know, commercial release it's amazing to me so it's awesome that people are still making games for the mighty vectrex <laughs> seriously yeah that's, that's, yeah that's truly dedication right there i know that system's like over 30 years old so and it didn't really sell that well but you can tell it, it was ahead of its time because yeah. of the vector graphics it's like mm -hmm. they could just do things that other systems at the you know couldn't do at the time yeah. so so thank you thank you very much all this right is cool um, so uh, Strictly Limited uh, sent me this game. Uh, this is Virt Virtuosity uh, X2X Collector's Edition for the Switch. Uh, Jason actually put me onto this game. Uh, Love like told game. me about it. You know, it plays like a like a mix of Sonic the Hedgehog and then a, a, a horizontal shooter, pretty much. Hopefully, I'm getting that right. Yeah, I am. But um, really fun Sonic game. Sonic the Hedgehog. You're gonna complete. Well, we'll because you know the part where she's like running through yes. the levels and everything. She goes fast. And she does, like, but she's shooting as well, though. Right, right, okay. right. So not quite Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> yeah, but, I was just trying but you're to right. Though the speed is very much so. That's okay. And everything. All right, I'll so, give you that. Um, so <laughs> very cool game. I'm happy that Strictly Limited did did a physical for it on the Switch. But um, I have this game on the Vita and the PS4. So I don't need a third version of it on the Switch. So Jason, that's all you, man. So oh, enjoy. dude. Wow. Oh, thank you, man. Dude, I know. It's so funny because this is one of those games where I end up buying it on every system available. Yeah. Because I love this game. And it's funny because I'm not really a speedrunner, but I become obsessed because you can totally speedrun this game. Mm -hmm. I'm not at that level. But I want to be. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, you know, wow. Strictly Limited, man, I, I'm liking what they're doing, of course. You know, like the soundtrack and everything like that. Um, yeah, mm. they're, they're putting out some quality titles, man. So, um, wow. Thank keep, you. Keep an eye on them, guys. Yeah, I don't have a physical version. That's cool. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty awesome, dude. All right, next up is a game that I'm completely confused by, and I, I want your help. Uh-oh. Subnautica by uh. Please. So this was a total blind buy at, this is a, I believe I bought this over the holidays where it was like buy two, get one free mm -hmm. at GameStop. And I was like, eh, I'll try this. This looks interesting. I, I found out about the game from my buddy Martin because uh, he was telling me it's like a, a, a the game is kind of scary because like, it was like a, it has a yeah. survival horror element yeah. to it. Not fully survival horror, but you're you're pretty much on another planet. Yeah. And you're, you you're, crash land on another planet. Mm -hmm. And you're pretty much stuck in the ocean, yeah. And, and you have to like kind of discover what's what your surroundings. Yeah. And there's some terrifying things in the water. I mean, well, immediately, because I didn't know what I was doing. Because mm -hmm. the game doesn't really hold your hand, so no. and it's kind of open world. So I'm like, well, I can see my main ship off in the horizon, so I'm just going to swim to it because that seems pretty logical. Mm -hmm. And then a shark eats me. <laughs> I was trying to dodge it and stuff, and you know, and then also the radiation levels are rising. Oh, man. And, yeah. I mean, basically, this is an open world survival game, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, I, what I want to know from you guys is like, where do you start with this? Because I was kind of floating around mm -hmm. underneath my, my raft and trying to figure out like, what am I supposed to, is every game different? Is it is it something where you just kind of need to, like, I'm wondering if you, I just need to read a guide or something like that, because I, I was or, not getting or, very far. Or you're asking like, is it random every time you start it pretty yeah, much? Okay. Yeah. Because you, I watched your footage and I don't think it showed... It showed those boxes and, and like the crash underneath you. Or mm -hmm. something. I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of curious to know. So it seems really interesting. It's by Gearbox, which of course they made. Um, what were those first person shooters? Um, Borderlands. Oh, that was them? I think so. Oh, yeah. So okay. it, it's got a good developer here. So I'm kind of curious to see what people think. So I don't know. Let me know. Tell me why I suck. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next game here. Um, let's see here. Uh, so. Uh, 
you talked about this on your, on your channel before. Yeah, and, play um, and beat all of these. Yeah, love these games. This is Shadow of the Tomb Raider Definitive Edition. And the reason I picked this up because, of course, it's the complete edition of the game. So it comes with all the downloadable content embedded on the disc. Patches, huh. DLC, all that stuff. So uh, this is the way to go with the game pretty much. So um, I'm a big fan of the Rise of the Tomb Raider series. Or we'll call it the Tomb Raider Survivor Series. Yeah. Um, the third one is my least favorite. I've heard people say that. I didn't hate it as much as other people, but I can see why. It, it, it's nothing wrong with it. It's just the other ones really... Like we're real at the time. We're like, yeah. whoa, dude! She's oh, on yeah. this island. You're with your friends. You're the trying to survive. The first game is amazing. Oh, amazing! And the first game is great. The second game is just amazing too, as yep. well. Uh, I love climbing that mountain and discovering all that stuff. But this, by the time we got to this one, the third game is always like kind of weird. Is that the third one, or is it Rise of the Term Tomb Raider the third? Rise of the Tomb Raider is the second out of oh, the, okay. new, the new series. This is the third game, and they went with a different developer for this one. Uh, I think it was. Um, oh, did they? Uh. uh Montreal, the Montreal studio did this one. Uh, they're the guys that did the D Death EX games. Oh, so Deus Ex. D games. Yeah. Oh, oh, so okay. they, they're the ones that worked on this game. So Which Deus Ex uh, is very different than that because Deus yeah. Ex is a first person game and it's a stealth game. Yeah, so they had them switch on to this game. And, you mm -hmm. know, uh, they did a good job, but like I said, by the time this game came out, it was maybe a little bit tiresome in a way. I don't know. That, um, I think, is, is a fair. I was also getting a little bit tired of it as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. but it's still a great game and this is the way to own it. Hmm. All the DLC on the disc, so you don't have to worry about online patches in the future. So basically, what you're saying is, wait. Unlike me, who bought it probably I, the first I, week, <laughs> I couldn't wait either. What I did was, um, I actually traded in my original copy of it, got this one. I kept the case for my original, so I just put this disc in the other nice case I had for it, and then boom, you know, yeah. I'm good with it like that. But huh. um, yeah, shout out to Tomb Raider. Let us know what you think about the game. You agree with us about it being the least favorite of the. The newer games. All right. Next up for me is a game yes! I'm going to ask you about because yeah. uh, this was also a uh, one of those GameStop things. Actually, I, this is when they had a what was the sale? It was like buy two get one free. I don't know. But anyways, so that it's new. It, it wasn't. It wasn't. A, you could buy new copies or something like that. Anyways, I haven't opened it yet, yeah. but you've talked about this. Yes. So tell me why I sh why I should own this game. Okay, so do you remember the game? my first PS4 game when I got my PS4 years ago was Until Dawn. Right. Uh, this is from the creators of Until Dawn. So if you like those type of games, uh, super this massive. Is, okay. This is it. So basically, this is about some uh, some 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 people that go uh, scuba diving, pretty much, and um, they end up running into some pirates, and the pirates think that they might have some kind of like know some whereabouts or some gold hmm. and the game takes place on a ghost ship so you're making you're doing quick time events you're making all kind of decisions it's really good and scary and one thing that a lot of people don't talk about this game i love the villain i love the silent villain and uh, the villain he doesn't say much he's very intimidating he doesn't say much I, that's what i like about him. like a lot of villains in, in games they talk too much yeah, or whatever. <laughs> also in this one he says a couple of things and like man you know he means business but uh huh. It's a. It, they got a uh, a couple of good uh, actors to real like actors to do the the, the game. Um, mm -hmm. One of them is from that uh, that I'm trying to remember the series. It's that one with uh, Kevin Bacon about the detective. Um, the oh, following yeah. his part, one of his partners. He's the one of the guys in that in this game. I forgot his name in the okay. game just now. But anyways, it's a really good game. Uh, it's on the cheap now. They're gonna do these in uh in, in um a, like a little like volumes and everything like yeah. that. So they're they're already working on the other one. They are come okay. out a couple months. But you're gonna be very entertained with this one. It also you can play online with people, make mm -hmm. your decisions like play online with people, and you can do couch co op of course. So. Well, I had a great time with that game. Yeah, well, the reason why I got the Xbox version is because one, I need more Xbox games. Yeah. Um, but also, too, this one looks. This one's Xbox One enhanced. It does, uh, you know, 4K. Yeah, you gotta um, go with the best. I mean, yeah. PS4 does like 1080p at the best, but when it comes to 4K, you gotta. Go the Xbox, Xbox is slightly more powerful, so yeah. I thought, you know what, this might be a really good one to show off the graphics because I know you're talking about that. So yeah, you'll definitely like it. And Marcus, if you're watching, man, you abandoned me on this game, so I haven't <laughs> forgot what you and Michelle did. So. That's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> right. Next game here. Um, um, my, I got the, well. This this is a funny story. So um, my buddy, I'll just say the Fox, he got this for me in Korea. I was looking for this game. This is Mega Man. Uh, the arcade games on one disc, so Mega Man uh, Power Battles one and two, and basically they're just Mega Man uh, boss battles. It's pretty much how the arcade games were. So no platforming involved, just you fighting bosses and everything. So the game is pretty simple, but I wanted just like the games on the disc by itself. So I got this. Um, Nothing really much to say about it. If you played Mega Man games before, uh, you know what to expect with this. Uh, uh, one good thing about this game is you can actually do um, two players pretty much. So you can go two players against one of the robots, and that's kind of fun doing that. And um, that's all there is to it. So Mega Man the arcade game. Fox, thanks for the hookup, man. I appreciate you. 
And um, yeah, I guess that's all I can really say about it. It's Mega Rock Man. Man. Yeah, Rock, Rock Man Japan is still called <laughs> Mega Man, but Rock Man Power Battle. So interesting, huh? Okay, cool. All right, next for me is a game uh, that I was totally surprised that I actually enjoyed the hell out of. Oh, man. I know. So Cars 3, Pixar's Cars 3 Driven to Win. I'm going to mention this game because I've mentioned the Cars games on previous Hidden Gems videos. Yeah, me? Yes, because the Cars games honestly are better than they should be. <laughs> I don't know what it is about them, but they get good de developers to do that. And... Uh, it just so happens that the Wii U version is a little bit more collectible than the other. You don't have to get on the Wii U, you can get it on the other systems. If you just want to play the game, I highly recommend you do that because this can be a little bit hard to find. Okay. But I have been, when I go into GameStops, looking at the Wii U sections going, what, you know, before they take them away forever. Okay. And I saw this there, and uh, it's a little bit more expensive than some of the other cheaper Wii U games. But anyways, the game is super fun. It's a arcade racing game. Um, it's completely over the top. It's a blast to play. Like it's 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 one of these kind of racing games where you have moves, you have power ups, uh, you jumps. It's just silliness over the top. Good arcade racing fun. It's awesome. I didn't even know there was a Cars Three movie. I thought there was this. Cars I didn't 3. either. And uh, but you know, I mean, honestly, the reason why I knew about this game is because so many people were recommending it to me. They're like, hey. Okay. Check this game out; you'll be surprised, and I really was. So, yeah, really fun. So, again, you don't have to get you don't have to get the expensive version on the Wii U. You mm -hmm. Get it on the others if if that's the system you prefer. But I dig it. All right, uh, next game here. Uh, I found I got lucky and found this at GameStop. Um, they this game was hard to find everywhere. I guess you had to like order it online in a way. Hmm. But this is demo uh, for the Switch. So basically, this is like a musical game. Where uh, I don't know too much about the story, but you're doing, you're playing a lot of songs and you're kind of lining oh, things up pretty I've much. I've heard of this. And, yes. uh, okay. From what I remember of it, because I have the Vita version as well, because I haven't played it in a long time, but it was like really has some like nice little songs on there and like, you know, it's really yeah. interactive and everything. Uh, the game originally came out on uh, our cell phones pretty much and then it was ported to like other things as well, but now we just got the Switch copy of it and um, I'm just happy that I found this game because I was like, dude. It looks like it's eerie, but you're right. It's like a, it's a, it's a music game or something. Mm -hmm. Huh. Yep. And it's basically this girl runs into this, I don't know what he is, but he looks like um, uh, one of those things from the Kingdom Hearts games. The, the, yeah. The, the, whatever they call those things, I forgot. <laughs> I, I gave up on Kingdom Hearts a while ago. But <laughs> anyways, Demo uh, for Switch, uh, definitely check it out. Let me know what you guys think of it. Um, and yeah. That is one of those games when I'm, I'm looking through the Switch section and I see a name that I haven't seen in a while. Because mm -hmm. you see the same ones all the time. Right. And so, yeah, that would pop up and be like, ooh, wait, haven't seen that in a while. And right. That's cool. All right. Well, speaking of kind of music related games, sort of, uh, how do I pronounce this? Octahedron? He Octahedron? Yeah, mm -hmm. I'll go with that. Yeah, Octahedron. That's totally fine. So, uh, this is put out by Super Rare, and this is. <laughs> this reminded me of if Daft Punk decided to do a platforming game. So it's very trippy, very kind of retro looking. Um, I just got it, so I haven't played it that much. But um, it has this mechanic where when you jump, you, you can create a, a platform underneath you. And then that platform exists for a little bit. And that will allow you to jump over to another one where you can then create okay. a platform. And so it's a little bit of a timing thing. Yeah, the timing. Yeah, okay. I'm where I would, That's what I was struggling with with this game, and I wasn't very good at it. So uh, I haven't played it a ton yet, but I'd love to know what you guys think. It seemed like it has really cool music. So, so the music is one of the strong factors in the game. Yeah, music. definitely. Like I said, and it has that sort of Daft Punk kind of like you know retro style to it. So. Okay, okay. All right, next game here. Uh, some of you guys have probably seen this game before. Um, uh, Gakido uh, Kantaro's Revenge for the PS4. Hmm. Uh, this collector's edition. This came from Red Art Games. And basically, this game was actually originally on the Game Boy Advance, but nobody really saw it on the Game Boy Advance. It came hmm. out later in the years, pretty much. And it's a beat em up game. And on the Game Boy Advance, though the game looked good, it wasn't two players. So this version is actually two players, which is cool. But after playing this game, it was, it was, it was fun. But at the same time, they added platform elements into the game, which I hate when they do with beat em up games. It, it, they're really weird platform elements, and when you fall down the pit, you get, I mean, you pretty much die, lose a big chunk of energy, and it, it becomes annoying. But the game is fun. Um, graphic, graphically, they just, they didn't really enhance from the Game Boy Advance version. They just kind of like expanded it, so the graphics look like Game Boy Advance, oh, uh, like Game Boy Advance game, which is pretty funny. But um, like I said, they added two player mode, which is very important for a beat em up game. You gotta have like some kind of co op in there. And I like the game. It's not the first game I'll go to when I want to play beat-em-ups. Obviously, I'll play something like uh, Urban Rain, like the, we talked about in the last video. Mm -hmm. or 
That's the name, right? Urban Rain or Urban Justice. I think that's what it was. Oh. Called. The, the strictly limited game we got in the last video, the beat 'em up game by. Oh, it's it's been a, it's been a couple weeks. We I don't, don't remember. remember. For hour, right? <laughs> Ray, yeah. Anyways, guys. Raging um, justice. Ray, uh, Raging justice. Yeah. I don't, I don't remember. Rain. I was thinking about another beat 'em up game. But anyways, I uh, slept since then. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's it's a decent beat 'em up, but I feel like there's better out there. But I, I still do enjoy it. So Red Art Games, they they put this out there. So hmm. you want to pick this up? Let's see what else you got, man. All right. Next up for me. Um, uh, Wizard of War Arcade, this is another game put out by Atari H for the Atari 2600. Yeah. Um, Wizard of War, is it, it's it, like I said, it's an arcade game. It, it, if I understand the story of this right, you play a like a cosmonaut that is in a maze and you're you're basically trying to shoot and survive through this maze. And it, it's surprisingly fun old school arcade game, but the reason why this is pretty cool is because they added speech for it. So if you have the Atari Vox add-on, it actually has the the arcade-like speech in it for the Atari, which is pretty impressive. That is impressive. Wow, yeah, man. very much so. I mean, I, I can't imagine how difficult I that would be. I love the detail of art they put into the I know. covers, man. I mean, seriously, that's, that's pretty badass, man. Yeah. Like, I know when people talk about Atari games, they look stupid or whatever, mm -hmm. when, you know, if it wasn't of your generation. But this is an example of a game that actually is really fun to play even today. So, okay. uh, and again, they added speech, which is pretty awesome. So, definitely, man. Yeah. Do they make uh, like a, a? Well, obviously they do because I got one. That'll be in the next video. But uh, do, they, do they make a lot of seventy eight hundred Atari Age games? Yes, they do. Yeah, okay. yeah. Actually, Atari Age is pretty cool because they. I mean, you know, they do twenty six hundred, seventy eight hundred, fifty two hundred. Uh, I actually at Portland, I also bought some uh, Jaguar. Like homebrews. Oh, really? Yeah, they'll do Jaguar CD stuff. Anything Atari. They, I don't know if they do Atari Lynx though, but it wouldn't surprise me if they do. Okay. But yeah, because there's so many people on that 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 site that know how to program, right. know how to do this stuff really well. So yeah, it's, 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 a, it's thank goodness that's not a lost art. How to protect the? Yeah. I mean, you might like like make games for these older systems. Yeah, like that, well, so. I think that I think honestly the developers like to challenge because mm -hmm. it is so hard to do something that's fun with such limited resources right and so i think that a lot of these developers they take it upon themselves like you know ed freeze who is the guy who did halo mm -hmm. and and helped publish the the original xbox when he left microsoft he made halo 2600 yeah I just to see that, if yep. he could you know mm -hmm. and he did yeah wow man okay very cool man um let's see here um so uh another game out of that that, that shoot 'em up collection uh from that store the last okay we got yes uh this is called shooting love um I don't really know how to pronounce these names. Twelve Zeal and Azil. I guess I'll just go like I, that. Is this one? I I don't think that I have this one. Yeah, this is like like you had a couple in that photo where I had dude, never yeah, seen. Yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy, man. Like, he had so much there. I was like, dude. Yeah. But I, I picked this one up there as well because this is one I was looking for, and it comes with two old school shoot 'em up games. Um, they're pretty. I would say they're pretty not old, but I would say like they're they're maybe like early '90s, well mid '90s type uh, shoot 'em up games. I would mm. say. But other than that, they're still pretty fun. I had a good time with them. And um, yeah, knocked them out. There are a bunch of really weird or just obscure shoot 'em ups on the 360. I mean, it's uh, it's amazing how many got released. It's almost like they just got together and like, okay, we're gonna release all of these games on the 360. Yeah, because compared to the PS3, man, there's, yeah. like, there's like maybe a handful on that system, but the Xbox really just went all into yeah. it. So I know, because I've got a bunch of them, and I still keep finding more. This and a lot crazy. of them are region-free, so yeah. just to let you guys know. There's some that are region-locked, but more so uh, more uh, games are actually region-free, so you can just pop it in your 360 and, and play it. Or heck, even your Xbox One now and play them, so backwards <laughs> compatibility. All right, so... Okay, uh, for me... Smoke and Sacrifice, uh, another game by Super Rare. This is... Smoke and Sacrifice. Yeah, Smoke and Sacrifice. This is a game that was like, what the heck am I playing? So this is a role-playing game that has a very weird and distinct look where all of the, the all of the, most of the graphics are kind of like flat 2D characters but but it's a 3D space and so when they turn they it does it does the sprite does turn really and, yeah and it's it's definitely a very unique looking RPG it almost makes me think it was maybe originally made for mobile or something like that and like yeah, maybe Cur the, curve actually did this uh, they, they they've done some games on the PS4 like a uh, Claire and another game I can't think of that they're mm. like survival horror games, but yeah, I, I know this company, so yeah, they're pretty good. Yeah, so this one, um, and again, I just got it. But basically, you are a mother and your child. You live in this this world where they they it requires a 
sacrifice of a child in order to basically Man. keep everyone alive. And so she sacrifices her child. That's dark. But yeah, but what happens though is that, and so 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 the elders of, of, of the town take the child and it vaporizes it. And supposedly everything's gonna be fine. Mm -hmm. But what happens is, I forget how many years later, darkness comes and evil comes and she finds out that actually no, the child is still alive, that there's this other area mm. that they get warped to and they're doing something with these these stolen children. So, it, and it's really weird looking, you guys are looking at the, the, the footage here, very creepy. Uh, there's a little bit of crafting involved with this, a little bit of combat, uh, a lot of exploration. It seems like a pretty deep RPG, so I'm, and it's unlike anything I've played before, so I'm actually kind of interested in, interested in digging a little bit deeper into it because it's okay. pretty bizarre, so. So far, I'm digging it. I'd love to know if anyone has, actually has it and played it themselves. So Okay. All right. All right, guys. So uh, I actually bought a couple more than I should have, but I'm going to try to <laughs> knock them out pretty fast so we can get back to our... Like, so people. typical. Yeah, I know. I probably right? haven't heard of any of them either. So um, first one real, real fast here is Stay. Uh, this is another game from Red Art uh, Games. Um, I talked about this on the channel before, and pretty much, if you think of like a situation like you've seen the movie Saw, pretty much, right? Yeah. The first one where they were stuck in that room together. Yeah. Well, think about this as being Saw, where you're stuck in a basement with a computer, and that's your only access to talking to somebody else, and you're the other guy on the computer talking to the main character. So the game kind of plays in real time. If you turn the game off, time still goes by for the main character. So if you like come back and play the game a week later. He might be dead of dehydration or something like that, or just like <laughs> gone crazy. So it's pretty trippy. And no also, pressure. You no know, pressure. And also, he's in that basement, and uh, it's dark in there, and there's stuff down there that's actually alive as well. So you have to be careful of what's around there. So very creepy game. Um, uh, very puzzle based, but lots of text, the text talking, and everything mm. like with the what, what you tell the main character, and what you tell him leads to different paths in the game, like endings and everything like that. So. Very cool. He he gets how he gets in the basement. He gets kidnapped when he he wakes up. Some an intruders in his house. All of a sudden he wakes up. Intruders standing over him. He wakes up in the basement. So that's how it pretty much starts. So hmm. stay for the switch. Also available for the PS4 and the Vita as physicals. Hmm. Okay. Oh yeah. I, I, I keep yeah. thinking that shit. I gotta keep going here. All right. So uh, a gigantic attack. Uh, a gigantic army uh, for the switch. Uh, if you get if you play games like um, I'm gonna say Cybernator or um, oh, okay, uh, what's the other one? I can't think of Front Mission and the other one Assault Suit Linus or whatever it's called. Um, wow. Um, oh, is, is this a Play Asia? Okay. Yeah, Play Asia exclusive. Well, no, it's on, it's on other places too. But I got that from Play Asia. Huh. So pretty much you like those type of games. It's arcadey, like a robot, like action game. Pretty much, you know, you go through the levels, fight bosses and everything, try to stay alive. Very fun. Gets to the point of the game. Very arcadey like. If you're looking for story, it's told through text, like at beginning of levels and after levels. So you did not a really video that... on your channel about that. Yeah, I, I did. Okay, I talked is, about it on there. So familiar. So okay. I think it's a fun game. I thought it was worth talking about in, in yeah. the video. So uh, if you like the footage you're seeing here, definitely check that one out. Huh. And um, last one before we go, your turn again. Um, this is a Metal Storm Collector's Edition. Uh, for Nintendo. So, oh, this came out. Yeah, this came out. I got this from Castlevania games. Oh. And this is like uh, Metal Force is um, not Metal Force. I'm sorry, guys. Metal Storm <laughs> uh, was a very expensive game as of now. The original is very expensive, so um, they got reprinted and everything in this nice collector's box. So does this have the figure? Has the figure inside of it and everything. So huh. a lot of cool stuff inside of here. Um, I never really played the game before, but now I'm actually happy I did play it. It's actually pretty cool, so I think I would have really enjoyed it, especially back when it first came out. But the original version of the game was actually really expensive. I've heard. Say. Well, and I think it's one of those examples where, you know, it is a game that people actually do want to play. They do mm -hmm. want to own it. It's right. just not because it was, you know, rare. It's right. that people actually want to have it in their collection. So yeah. it's cool that they got the the permission to reprint that. Yeah, definitely. And then if some people have the original version, I guess they could just throw that one in here if they wanted to, <laughs> just make it like, yeah, collectors. But anyways, huh. uh, Metal Storm, uh, it's been out for years. Let me know what you think of it. Yeah, that's cool. All right, the last one for me is a, uh, a guy contacted me and he's like, hey, do you have Octopath Traveler in your collection? Because <laughs> he's, he's like, I know you like JRPGs. And I was like, no, I, I've heard of this, but I hadn't. Anyways, he donated this. This is a uh, this is from Hendrick. Thank you very much. Uh, Octopath Traveler for the Switch. I've heard nothing but great things from you know about this game. It's kind of like Super Nintendo graphics, but it has a tilt shift look to it where um, 
it's kind of, it's hard to describe, you guys are seeing it on the screen, but it's sort of like, you know, where it's sort of zoomed and in a, yep. in a really it. interesting yeah. way. So, yeah. beautiful graphics. Um, I've heard this game is epic in every way. It's by Square Enix, so uh, I, I haven't played it, have you? I, I avoided it, um, and, and, I, and I, I don't want. I'm not trying to turn you off from the game, but I, I heard it. Kelsey, um, when I was talking with Kelsey, she was telling me that you know she liked the game, but she felt like they made it drag on too long, hmm. just to make it longer. And they, they should hopefully. I mean, it, it might be possible they did that. You know, some games drag on a bit, and when they should end a little bit earlier. But mm -hmm. not everybody has that same opinion. But just be aware that's some of the like criticism about the game. But other than that, a lot of people I know enjoyed it. So, uh, um, Joel from Media Glitch was playing it uh, yeah. a couple years back. He really enjoyed it. I scene. think it did really well because I know that it came out at a time when a lot of people are looking for old so, school style type RGBGs, especially yeah. if you play on a Switch and everything. Yeah. So, so yeah, yeah I'm, I'm curious to check it out. I'm definitely going to give it a, a, a chance. So, okay. um, yeah. So, thank you very much. All right. My last item here. Um, ah. This was clearance. Well, somewhat. Clearance. You messaged me about this. I did. You're I like, remember. you're like, dude, you got to go pick this up. And I'm like, because GameStop was selling those for cheap, right? Yeah, Nino Kuni uh, Two Collector's Edition was being sold for thirty-five dollars. So, I looked. I said, "Hmm, what does that come with?" And I saw what it came. With. I said, "That's worth thirty-five dollars." <laughs> Plus, uh, I had the, the discount and everything for ten percent. Oh, so okay. I, I used that, and it ended up being like, um, like thirty-two something. I can't. Remember. That's what it was. So I thought it was totally worth it for what it comes with. I'm willing to take a gamble on a collector's edition for that price. So, yeah. Uh, I, Actually, I have not played the game yet, but I know how it plays. I just wanted to show you guys what came in the box and everything like that. So, uh, Nino wow, Cooney. So all the stuff in the back here. Nino Cooney is is, is, a, is that a lunch pail? What is that? It's like a some kind of like art card thing. Oh, okay. Somebody set it Papercraft up for. thing, huh? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's made by one of our favorite developers, Level Five, who made one yeah. of my favorite RPGs of all time, Roll Galaxy. Oh, that's so right. So they've been working on. They worked on this game. So. Um, I'll definitely give it a chance because of them. And um, I know Kinsey loves this series, so I, I bet she's played and beat this. Yeah, she's not, she even has the DS version, like like the Japanese. Oh, like, yeah. oh, well, well she, she 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 does know a little Japanese, so okay. <laughs> hopefully she's enjoying that. Version. Yeah, uh, but yeah, this is gonna be the first one I play out of the Nino Kuni series. So um, uh, if anybody knows uh, what, give us your opinions on the on the game. Yeah, you think the two is better than the first one? I know they're very different, but you know I get the feeling that the Nino Kuni Cooney series didn't get as popular as they expected it to because I think the name. I, mean, I like, think so too. Is that that while I think we know it mm -hmm. and we we recognize it, but you know the average person may have no idea what that game is based on the name. Yeah, you know. So yeah, it's like what what is that? So huh. anyways, this this was originally two hundred bucks at GameStop. So you know, wow. tell you how much of a, a price drop you got from it, hmm. and. Um, it's it was just sitting up on their shelf for a couple of years. They they really they want to get this stuff out of there because they're they're trying to get new stuff in and it takes up rooms. So that's why they're willing to clearance this stuff, type of stuff out. So yeah. if you want to know when stuff gets cheaper at GameStop, definitely check Saturdays and Sundays. That's when they drop prices of a lot of their games in their stores. So interesting. All yeah. right, dude, that is another pickups video in the can. Yes, out of the way. <laughs> um, man, this. I'm doing it, man, as usual, man, and um, you know we got plenty of more coming. Uh, there's a game I, I forgot to bring, but I'll definitely bring it the next video, and I'll, it'll be the first game I show actually. Mm. So I think you'll, you, it'll be really cool for you. More guys. pick Check out. videos, yeah, I know. <laughs> We're already planning. We so. already are. All right, guys, thanks very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Take care.